Hey guys, it's Emily and today I want to share something a little bit personal. It's something that I don't share very often, at least not like this. Um, it's a little bit hard for me to talk about, but I think that it's important and that is my health and fitness journey and where it all started. So when I was 16, I developed disordered eating. And at the time, I was a very stressed out teenager. I thought that if I was perfect in every single way, that I would be happy and everyone would like me. No one was telling me this. It was just what I, I thought. I was so convinced. And part of that was looking like I had the perfect body. Now, at the time, there wasn't like this body positivity movement, at least not from what I could tell. I thought that I needed to be real thin. You know, having a butt wasn't cool yet. It was just in my mind that if I was super skinny, that I would be loved, that people would like that, that look, they'd like me. And so I started to really restrict the foods that I ate. And so there were like good foods and bad foods, and I couldn't eat the bad foods because I was convinced that they would make me fat. That's, that was what I would tell myself. And I also started to really restrict how much I would eat. So I always ate, but I never ate enough and I was so hard on myself for eating only the good foods. It started to consume my every thought, it really did. I was either thinking about the foods that I would get to eat and when my next meal was, or what foods I couldn't eat and had to stay away from, or the foods that I wanted to eat and I would see them and then I would like have this inner battle of wanting to eat them so badly and knowing that I would be a failure if I did. It was everything. My family went on vacation, I remember this really distinctly. We went on vacation, we had a breakfast buffet that we went to, and everyone was so excited, this whole like delicious looking breakfast spread. My dad got his waffles, and I stood there looking at all the food, and I just started to cry because I was so overwhelmed by the options, by the, the want, the desire that I had to eat these foods but I couldn't let myself, like for one second. So I'm just st standing there sobbing in the middle of a restaurant, having this deep emotional struggle. And it was like that a lot. Maybe not in public all the time, but de definitely in private, I had that happen a lot. I started to weigh myself every day, multiple times a day. I think my highest frequency was six times in a day, just to see if the scale would change. Um... I started to get very cold. I started to lose a lot of weight. So, so part of that was I would get cold. And um, to this day, I still have a problem with, with being cold. It, I, I don't get cold as often, um, but I was so sad, so depressed, so miserable. So to this day, if I feel like I cannot get warm soon, I'm, I like start to freak out a little bit because it takes me back to that feeling. I could not concentrate or have normal conversations with people my age or really anybody, but what are you supposed to talk about? The food? Like, that's all I could think about. And I really started to lose friends and isolate myself. Um, people started to notice uh, and make comments, and um, that was hard because I liked the comments that they would make. People would make them out of concern, like my friends started making comments, some of them positive, uh, like meaning that they wanted to help me. Some of them were more toxic friendships, which I now realize, and it was more so out of jealousy and, and really just out of lack of understanding for a lot of it. Teachers would even make comments. But that's why I'm so cautious now about what I say when I'm talking to someone about their body or their food, because you don't know what their mindset is and how that's gonna impact them. So for me, if a teacher said to me, Emily, you're looking really thin, are you okay? I wanted them to say that. Like I wanted them to tell me to eat a sandwich because that reinforced that what I was doing was working. Remember I even got called out in the middle of the class one time. A student talked about how skinny I was in front of everybody and the room just was like silent. And I just sat there not knowing if that was a good thing or a bad thing or what to say. My mom and my dad started to worry about me. Um, they didn't know how to help because I always ate, but I was just losing so much weight. Um, but my mom just told me this today. She said that when we went prom dress shopping, 
she had to hold back tears because she saw my muscles or my, my bones protruding from my dress. And that's really hard to know that you've scared your parents like that and that they couldn't, um, they couldn't do anything to help me. Um, they tried, but I, I wasn't ready to receive that. Like I wasn't ready to get out of it. I, I, I didn't know how. I was so laser focused on this goal. And what I think is now interesting to look back on is one moment that really stands out to me is when I actually achieved my goal. So my goal at the time was to get to a certain weight and that weight to me um, was, you know, that was perfect. If I got there, then I would be super skinny and I'd be happy. It'd be smooth sailing from there on out. And I remember that I was in the bathroom and I stepped on the scale and I actually got to that weight and actually a little bit below it, um, half a pound lower, I remember. And I remember thinking to myself, as I looked down at that very low weight, I don't feel any different at all. And I've just sacrificed almost everything. Like I've been in this t torturous experience for so long. What am I supposed to do? Do I just keep on losing weight? Because maybe then I'll be happy or like, I don't think I can keep going like this. And, you know, I saw, I saw those cracks, but I just didn't know how to fix it. So it wasn't until college that I think things started to shift for me. In college, I had a new environment, I had new people, and just, you know, a difference, a different change in my life, which was positive. I had um, a newfound education around nutrition. Um, I started to learn the basics and started to view exercise and, and food as being positive, and food particularly as something that was meant as fuel. It wasn't the enemy, but it was supposed to help us to do the things we need to do in life to help us stay alive. But the biggest thing for me was exercise. I had exercised before, but not a lot. Um, I didn't really know what I was doing, that's for sure. And we had a, um, a basement gym underneath our dorm, so I'd go down there a lot and I'd work out. And I started to feel really good about myself. Like in that half hour or hour workout, I could start to feel happy gave me that feeling. And my inner dialogue changed from feeling, um, you know, so depressed, so angry at myself, guilty all the time that my body wasn't perfect to, hey, my body's doing something pretty cool right now. Like, I like the way this feels. I started to feel strong. I started to feel empowered. I started to feel like I could do a lot of things to go and ha be happy. But I couldn't do that without food. And that was another thing. I cannot keep exercising if I don't eat. And I started to get hooked on it in a good way. Um, I eventually joined a gym off campus and I was still too afraid to go work out on the fitness floor alone. So I would just go to um, the group fitness classes and I loved them. And I remember looking at the teachers and they were so positive and happy and confident and they exuded positivity and that's what I wanted to feel. And so I said, that's what I wanna be. Like those are the type of people that I want to be around. That's the type of feeling that I wanna to give to other people. And so that's what I did. I became a group fitness instructor. I taught indoor cycle. I was not very good. I had no idea what I was doing, um, but I loved it. And I remember that when it came time to decide what I wanted to do for my career toward the end of college, that was it. So I went home and I told my parents that I wanted to keep doing group fitness, become a personal trainer and go to grad school for exercise science. And they said, okay. And so that's what I did. And I also remember at the time, this same conversation, I remember saying to them that why I wanted to do it was because to me, exercise is one of the most emotionally charged things that we do during our day. Because if you love your body and you love exercise, you have a positive experience, a positive emotion toward exercise and toward that, just toward everything related to health and fitness. And if you don't like your body or don't enjoy exercise or you know are trying to get on a program and you're just falling off the wagon, guilt, all that stuff, there's a lot of negativity there as well. So everybody goes into their workout having some sort of feeling about it. 
And if I could help women to go from having a negative experience with exercise or with their body and helping them to have a more positive experience and reap the health and fitness benefits of that, but then even more importantly, to reap the mental benefits of that, to feel good about their bodies and to enjoy their body, to feel confident, they could take that and they could go into their life in every realm and show up better for their families, for their career, for everything. And that's what I wanted to do. Like that to me is life goals. And I'm so glad that that's what I've gotten to see and experience. You know, I know that not everybody has experienced the same struggle as me, uh, exactly the same struggle. But I do know that for women, we've got a lot of pressure on ourselves to be perfect, to look a certain way, to have this body type. And that's a lot of pressure. And that's that comes with so much guilt. And it's really hard. And so to me, what's most important is helping women to understand that they can have the body that they want. They can feel the way they want to feel without hating the process, without having to hate themselves to get there. So if you have felt regret toward what you've eaten, anxiety about your body or about food or exercise, guilty, um, just anything, if you felt anything negative about exercise or about your body, about that process of getting fit and healthy, I get it, I totally get it. That was my whole life for a little while, was negativity towards this stuff. But please know that I know what that feels like. I'm here for you. I see you. I get it. And it is totally possible to get all the things that you want without having to have that negative feeling. You can be happy and have the health and fitness benefits, the body that you want. So that's my story. Um, I'm honored that you watched it, that you listened to this. I'm, I'm like sweating so bad right now sharing this. Um, but thank you. Thank you for listening. Um, thank you for watching. And I'll talk to you soon.